Hey, 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 everyone. I hope everyone is good. I hope everyone is well. You know, I realized that when I start my podcast, I don't really introduce myself. So I want to say hello. My name is Lisa Marie. I am the host of Season Dialogue. And I know that you'll hear a, you know, a beginning before um, you hear the podcast, but I just want to officially say hello. If you are new and listening to the podcast, I'm so, so, so happy that you are here. This is a place where we just dump everything out and we talk about everything. Nothing really is taboo. Um, I also want to share my experiences and um, just be a vessel for so many people. I have discovered that through talking and just being honest that I have found that it gives me relief. And it's also a a testament to what I feel like we are all walking through and experiencing in this lifetime. So this is episode two in season two and on episode one we talked about toxic parenting and I cannot tell you how much of a relief and a release it was to actually talk about this again I had jotted down so many things that I wanted to talk about in season two and this one kept jumping out at me and I felt like I needed to go ahead and speak on it and I'm so happy that I did because I had several people who knew me personally reach out to me through text and just say how it really just it helped them and it opened up um, their hearts and being receptive of not understanding um, their parents and I also had several people reach out to me via social media and share their experiences with, with me so I know that the work is being done and I am so 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 grateful that we are sitting in this space together collectively because I don't know if y'all know this or not but y'all are my family right now okay so y'all can't go nowhere More respectfully, I want to shout out um, those who have been really digging deep into the podcast and took moments out of their day instead of just, you know, giving me a rating, which I really appreciate. Thank you. I want to um, personally thank each and every person. And if I say your name wrong, please take it for love. I'm reading this. Um, And so in my mind, I'm thinking I'm saying this right. But listen, if I don't say it right, don't get mad. Um, I want to thank Isolet, all right, for your comment. TC Classy, MH Love It, Pinkney 2, Yazzie Boo, Shiny Girl, and Indy Shay for your words of positivity and also just just showing up, you know, for me in this podcast and really just being a part of the family. It really, um, it really put a smile on my face. And, um, if you are on social media, y'all, I'm, I'm trying my best to show up, you know, in this season of my life so that this is something that I am continuously doing. But if you are on social media, you can follow Season Dialogue page on Instagram. I'm being, you know, more intentional about putting information out there. Um, I'm also on TikTok, which a lot of my focus right now is on TikTok because I found my tribe. I ain't even going to lie. Instagram be acting a little bougie. TikTok, you know, you find your people. And so, you know, I'm giving little tidbits of information so you can follow me there. And I am working on a YouTube channel where I will be uh, videoing these podcasts because I, I definitely understand that Some people are not apt to listening, but they want to see the visuals. So I am working on that. I'm excited. I'm excited about where it is that the podcast is going. And I am so happy with the family that I have in y'all. Like for real, y'all make me happy. In the previous episode, like mentioned, we talked about toxic parenting And I want to bridge into episode two and talking about the aftermath of toxic parenting, what that looks like for many of us, and also sitting with the understanding that maybe our desires are not our parents' desires in reconciliation and also getting honest feedback from their parenting skills. I want y'all to go on a mental trip with me, okay? Just imagine, close your eyes, or just sit um, in quietness and think about this for a minute. 
when we think about genetics, we think about it health wise, right? We think, oh, well, you know, um, heart disease or diabetes runs into the family. And so we take precautions so that we are not risking our lives with those sentiments that we set on for so so much time and knowing that our family has a history of these diseases. And that is one part of genetics that we also understand. It could be as simple as also um, dimples run into the family. Uh, a certain hair color or hair uh, texture maybe runs into the family based on genetics. There's a uh, expanding way in which we attribute genetics, but Listen to me for a minute and think about this. If we think about our family lineage and we think about our parents and how everything really starts with the womb of the woman, right? And how she is carrying what was our great grandmothers or great grandfathers and grandfathers and grandmothers onto our parents. What seems to happen is the things that started in the beginning, let's say we'll start with the great, great grandmother and whatever emotions and cycles that she was dealing with while caring, you know, innately she is giving this also to her child. Anything that she had dealt with, whether it was stress or depression, there is a linkage to our, our feelings and our behaviors that are internal that is also felt within that child. And so the child picks that up and then they become, you know, our great grandmothers or great grandfathers. And it goes down a line of different attributes. It's not so different in the way in which, as we discussed in the previous episode, how the teachings of parents are. And I want to dig into this now. I, I said more about um, the mother, the mothering part, but I also want to dig into the fathering part and how this attributes also to us as parents and just us showing up as people, period. A lot of people, many people, I should say, have had the experience of having an absent parent um, and what this does for women and men alike is that it it provides space of not knowing who that parent really is. It could be the drop off and showing up and parenting that also gives the feeling as if they don't care and it provides unresolved issues. Therefore, with the space of feeling as if the parent doesn't care about me and I don't care about that parent. It opened up so many vulnerabilities that we have. Imagine being a child and not knowing the absent father in your life, which also contributes to in you know your childhood having to sit and see children who have fathers and wishing for that relationship and then turning that wanting and that longing and that vulnerability into anger. And as we grow and as we mature, we don't really sit on the presence of what that emotional tie does to us. It becomes um, a place of anger it becomes a place of resentment and it, it becomes a place of sadness for many adults, male and female. More additionally, when our parents are unavailable and their focus and attention are sporadic, children do not feel safe and secure. And this is important because when you have the absence of what you need, you start to recreate in your mind and how you enter into relationships, it can be very costly and tragic. And I'll give you an example. Men and women who enter into relationships, adult relationships, um, often when they are missing the presence of a parent, whether it is a mother or a father, they can do many things. Entering into relationships way too fast. Love bombing 
overly giving love and expecting that the presence of someone else will initiate that love and it will be equal. Finding out later that their love bombing or overbearing love really separates that person away from them. Bonding in relationships as toxic behaviors. This could be entering into relationships because you know, parts of your life have been lonely and so you choose to have a mate to substitute that loneliness, but the overbearing of needing and wanting a partner there drives that partner away. That is also toxic. Not having the fulfillment of a parent also, for many people, moves into a place where the needing that the person wants in that relationship become so much so that they feel they can't live without that person. So now you become very attached, vulnerable, no sense of what it feels to just love yourself. And honestly, not knowing who you are because the absence of a parent in their toxic ways also doesn't allow you to learn who they were so that you can understand the dynamics and how you work. The aftermath of the toxic parenting, um, also linking to the absence of the parents, because let's be honest, when we speak of toxic parenting, it's not always the presence of them uh, you know, doing something to us, the absence of it is toxic because we look at our parents and revere our parents of some form of responsibility, knowing that we are here. But the inability for them to just show up in our lives and be present is a toxic behavior because they are pulling from us innocently as children and not acknowledging that we exist also putting their personal affairs and anything that they have going on above and beyond the existence of us as children. And as much as we don't want to hear it, there is the realization that we suffered as children, but we're adults now. And where do we put all of this energy and all of our feelings? Where do we put this at? How do we deal with the rejection that we felt from our parents? Here are some examples that could help us in the process of healing from an absent parent and also acknowledging their toxic ways of not showing up in our lives. Not saying that it would help every individual person, but these are examples of what we could do to bridge the gap, right? Just write a letter, whether it is that you are writing a letter to give in the physical form to the absent parent or just writing down all of your thoughts as honestly as you can and how it made you feel. Because now you are moving into the presence of acknowledging that it hurts, acknowledging that you have not dumped all of your feelings out in some capacity and writing how you feel as honestly, as fast, no thoughts of, oh, I'm going to erase this or take this out. Just writing how you feel, how it made you feel and how it showed up in your life will give you a sense of relief. Develop a group of supportive people. If you are married, if you have a close friend, a significant other, And these are people that you trust. Do not be afraid to have this conversation with them. What you'll recognize in speaking and venting and talking to someone is that that other person may be understanding of what's going on, but it builds a supportive system because now they kind of have a view of why it is that you enter into love the way that you do. Maybe your love is a little shaky because of the absent parent you have distrust. Maybe the reason why you love bomb in the beginning of the relationship or in the process of the relationship is because the absence of the parent and now they they understand. 
or just simply create a boundary. You sit in the knowing that as you are healing right now, and I, I'll stop there, okay? And then I'll go in. When we are healing from something, healing is not this vainglorious, beautiful things with doves and beautiful flowers and confetti. It is often ugly, right? And so the process of healing is moving forward and stepping back many times because we are now just rearranging our thoughts and trying to get ourselves conditioned with the fact of whatever it is that we're sitting on. So creating a boundary between you and the absent parent also eliminates these hardened thoughts that you have towards that parent and also saves you when you are healing. Because if you still have that point of disconnect and you have those feelings of hurt, you are not healing. So if creating a boundary, which says at this moment, I recognize that my parent being absent was a toxic behavior. Therefore, I'm not entering into conversation and I acknowledge that it is what it is. I create this boundary for me not to shut them out. But right now, it's some things that I have to deal with and work through. And this is part of the healing process. That is okay. While we are healing from this toxic and absence of the parents, I want you to personally put your hand over your heart. I want you to breathe in deep. Okay, exhale. And I want you to say the following things to yourself because, you know, we have to stand up and be available in our own space for ourselves. While we are going through this healing process, say to yourself, hand over your heart. Deep breath. Say to yourself, I've got you. I'm here. I'm holding on to you. I'll breathe through this with you. I'll comfort you whenever you're feeling scared or overwhelmed. I'm here with you. I'll stay with you. I'll breathe with you and keep you calm. The interesting part about this is that when we're saying this to ourselves, we're also acknowledging that the absence of a parent in those statements is the things that we've wanted to hear for so long. But the beauty is that we are taking our parents out of the scenario and we are standing firm within ourselves and being ourselves and saying, I got you. Because honestly, if nobody else got us, we have ourselves. Reconciliation may not happen. You may not be able to initiate a conversation with your parents and you have to sit still And know that no matter how you show up, no matter how intentional you are, no matter how nice your delivery is, your parents will not be receptive and not listen to anything that you have to say. And more importantly, I want you to understand this. And I mentioned this in the other episode. Sometimes our growing stops at a certain level and your parents are not absent from that process. When they have felt within themselves that they have done what they were supposed to do, due diligence as parents, they don't want to hear the mistakes or the things that have happened in your childhood that has contributed to your anger and your hurt as an adult. Listen to this. Reconciliation is mostly an internal movement. Our relationship with our parents is not dependent on what they do, how they are, or how they respond. It's about what we do and the change occurs in us. We know our parents through and through. We know their vices, we know their triggers. And that is why it is very, very important for you to understand that 
reconciliation, I'm sorry's acknowledgement may never come, but it's what you do with yourself in the moment and how you choose to live your life beyond it. The Bible is very clear when it says, honor your mother and your father. But God also gives us wisdom. Parents operate just like normal people. We give them the responsibility of knowing because we revere them as wise and mature and who've experienced more things than we have. But it doesn't take away from the fact that just like they hurt, we hurt as well. It is important that we understand this. We may have the chance to transform something difficult into something that can bring us strength. By developing a relationship with the painful parts of ourselves, parts we have and often inherited from our parent, qualities like toxic parenting can become a source of our kindness to others or our judgments that can forge the foundation of our compassion. When we feel at peace with ourselves, it often begins with being at peace with our parents. Again, sitting with the knowing that maybe reconciliation may never happen, but we are at peace with knowing that we have released all that we know, all that we have witnessed, all that we have absorbed from parenting and understanding that because we are in the process of healing and we want to resolve and get to final healing, we have to be at peace with ourselves. Think about this for a minute. Even if our parents showed up in toxic ways by again, all of the elements that we can think of, right? their meanness, um, maybe showing bouts of jealousy, their harmful ways of physical abuse, saying things that undermine our strength, um, picking on our weaknesses with all of those things that we can throw in the pot of toxicity. Is there a moment where you can think of a loving gesture or a loving word or just a moment that gives you peace. It is often in those moments when you pick up something positive about that parent, you kind of sandwich it in or overlay it over the toxic things that you have experienced. It doesn't mean that the toxic ways in which they showed up for you means that it's okay. It means that you have space in your heart, in your mind, and in your soul to recall some of the good things, if not many, maybe one. Good example of what your parent in a positive light meant to you. But even when we are on this path of healing, I want you to be aware of some things, some inner conflicts that you may face. Sometimes the freedom that we seek eludes us. We are unable to feel at ease inside of our bodies. We search for the relief in the next glass of wine. You know, let's be real, we're adults now. That cigarette, that drug, or honestly having sexual encounters with many people. Relief rarely comes when the source of our longing is from our parents' love. Sometimes overindulging in things makes us feel as if we are replacing the absence of our parents or the knowing of the toxicity and thinking that these things can fulfill our lives and bring us to happiness. Be careful how you allow what happened to you through the toxic actions of your parents to manifest within you and your life as of today. Also be careful, again, we're gonna go back to you know relationships very briefly, saying this now, 
Be careful how vulnerable you become in relationships because the absence and the toxicity of the parents never allowed you to feel the presence of love. And so we can do terrible things like loving too much on a person who is not ready for that. And I know that sounds crazy. How can you love a person too much? But you can. You can put all of your expectations, all of the things that you have bottled up in your head about the things that you have missed and put that on the person who is not prepared for who you are and how you show up. When you are unable to link the conflict of your childhood into your adulthood and understanding that the way you are operating now is dangerous and how you move in your future relationships and friendships with others because you will always have an expectancy to receive some form of missing counterparts when you are unable to link your conflict of your childhood and put fault on a person in a relationship or in a friendship the constant need for people to show up the way that you needed them to show up creates an unbalanced relationship and connection with other people. We can also be guilty of taking in all of the toxic things that we experienced and throw them out on others. Our inability to love others came from the form of the toxic parenting. You enter into relationships only to have someone there, but treating them like they're less than human. This appears in relationships, not being able to express how you feel. So being overly expressive in friendships and relationships because you were never heard as a child and now you take this opportunity as an adult in friendships, connections, and relationships, and you become overbearing. Wanting to be in control of your life and everybody else's while making them miserable. Because you didn't have control as a child, now you offer up all of the control within yourself as an adult, controlling your children, controlling your significant others, controlling your friends and watching how this journeys on now into a separation from the friends that you had now into a separation of your significant other. And now you're seeing the aftermath of how your children communicate and how they love on you or lack of love. I want to be clear no matter how successful we are in our personal lives, okay? How wonderful we think that our communication skills are within ourselves. How many self-help books we read or how many segments of self-love audio tapes or audio feedback that we listen to or how deeply we understand our own patterns of avoiding intimacy, if we are still entangled in our family history, we can distance ourselves from the, the ones that love us the most. We unconsciously repeat the same family patterns of neediness, mistrust, anger, withdrawal, shutting down, leaving or being left and blaming our partners, our friends, and our children for our own unhappiness when the truth and the source lies among us. We must be aware of the cycles in which we've experienced in our life. We must also be cognizant of the cycles in which our parents witnessed in their lives. And you have to take the initiating approach to want to stop everything where you are. Entering differently in friendships, connections, relationships, and parenthood and understanding that you are 
the reason why the trauma and the generational curse of toxic ships must be broken. Before I close this out, I want you to recognize a few things that you may have experienced while moving from a child that was affected by toxic parenting into an adult. Number one, you had difficulty in the relationship with your parents. We've already established that. But what's unfinished with your parents is likely to repeat with your relationships with your friends and your family and your children. You reject, judge, or blame your parents. These emotions and traits and behaviors in the rejection of a parent is likely to live on unconsciously in you. You might project the complaints you have about the parent onto your partner, right? Now, there is a difference in talking about your experience and projecting how you feel and, and what's inside of you on your partner. You may also attract a partner who embodies qualities similar to those of the rejected parent. When you reject a parent, you might balance this rejection by struggling in your own relationships. You might leave your partners or experience being left by them. Your relationships may feel empty or you may opt to stay alone. Number three, you are merged with the feelings of a parent. If one parent feels negatively towards the other, it is possible that you will continue these feelings towards your partner. Feelings of discontent toward a partner can be carried intergenerationally. Again, the toxicness of what your parents presented to you. Number four, if you are the child who always took care of your parents' feelings, I'm sure that left you sad, depressed, anxious, or insecure. This results in, you know, later in life, you being that child in adulthood, giving too much to the partner, your partner, your friendships, and straining the relationship. Like we said, love bombing, right? Or the opposite can be true. Feeling overwhelmed or burdened by the needs of your partner. Becoming resentful or feeling emotionally blocked as the relationship evolves. We have to continuously be equipped with the knowing of how the toxic behavior will manifest in our lives. And we also have to take heed and with the understanding that the way in which we are moving in our adulthood may manifest in so many ways in our connections to people. It is very vital and important that we write down all of the things that we have experienced and the things that we want to change present day in our relationships. It is never too late. You may have missed out on opportunities with friends that you may have had or relationships that showed up the way that we have discussed, but you always have time to reinvent yourself, come out in the healing process healed and knowing that you are better and that you are not producing the same toxic ways that was presented to you as a child and as an adult through your parents. Again, this has been one of those talk about season conversations that we needed. I am so, 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 so happy that you are here and that you are just still in the moment that we are taking this all in as a family and that we are getting some understanding and some wisdom behind everything. Please, please, please make sure that you follow up on the episodes. Like I told you before, in season two, we are digging in. We are going into some 
really serious topics that we all need to grasp and take hold in. This has everything to do with our mental health and also helping us to bridge into a more satisfied knowing of who we are and standing straight within understanding how we operate as people. I want nothing more than us to recognize our vices and our triggers, to enter into relationships and connections healed, right? And also being able to help those around us who need it most. What we recognize in ourselves, we can heal What we recognize within ourselves, we can help others with. And what we recognize in ourselves helps us to become the best version of ourselves. Ooh, all right, y'all, y'all, y'all take you a breath. Inhale, exhale, let that out, huh? That feels good, right? I'm overwhelmed right now, but it's a good overwhelming. I'm, I'm, I'm in a space of I got it all out. And I really hope that this helped so many of y'all. I will see you guys next week. Remember every Monday, beautiful reminders, which sets the precedence for our week and just giving positive and informative affirmations for self-love, self-truth, and the knowing that we are everything, right? Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next week. All right, peace.